here in the United States. An outbreak of a superbug fungus. This antibiotic resistant strain could be the end of the road for antibiotics. Antibiotic resistance is when a bug that causes the infection learns how to outsmart our antibiotics. They develop mechanisms to overcome our antibiotics so that they are not useful. Basically, we lose the antibiotic to treat a common infection. Antibiotic resistance is really a natural phenomenon. If you go all the way back to the 40s when we first had penicillin. One of the most common is that the way we treat strep throat, for example, has changed for some patients. In the course of my career, I've watched one of the most significant antibiotics of our time, carbapenems. E. coli has developed resistance to carbapenems, and that can leave patients with very few treatment options. The CDC and the FDA have estimated that about 35,000 deaths in the United States every year come from drug-resistant infections. We have a limited number of antibiotic drugs available. And when they stop working, we are not getting new ones at a pace to replace them. Even though we are developing antibiotics, you know, the bugs are still developing resistance. So it's kind of like a constant battle that we're trying to fight in the clinical space to make sure that the antibiotics we do have, we can continue to use. Treating antibiotic resistant pathogens is often a collaboration between the ID physician, the microbiology laboratory, and the ID pharmacist who together will put together all the information they have and design a regimen that should work for the patient. The pharmacist has an extraordinary role in treating these infections. He or she understands how medications behave in the body and they can tailor that or refine that treatment for the patient. Every time we use an antibiotic, we select the right drug, the right dose for the right duration for that patient, for that infection. That in itself is combating antibiotic resistance. In human health, we're using antibiotic stewardship programs to limit antibiotics to when they're absolutely necessary. But we're also looking at antibiotic use in agriculture, where it can sometimes be used to promote growth. And the same is true for crop science. So antibiotic stewardship programs um, set out to try to slow the development of antibiotic resistance by making sure that antibiotics are used optimally. So dosing of antibiotics is hugely important and of course as an infectious diseases pharmacist probably one of the things we spend the most time thinking about because we're dosing to make sure we're giving the patients a dose that's going to fall into that window of being effective, but not so much drug that we're leading to excess side effects or adverse effects. So really finding that sweet spot. And then more globally, we know that just the more, for lack of a better word, tonnage of antibiotics that we put into the system, um, be it the healthcare system or the environment, that runs more risk for resistance. What is important for other healthcare workers to know is that one, your antimicrobial stewardship program is not the antibiotic police. We are here to help. We are all on the same team. So your stewardship programs are really balancing patient care right now and patient care in the future. We really just need the healthcare professionals as a whole to be very cognizant of how they're prescribing antibiotics and really consider them as a shared public health resource and use them as such. The relationship that the ID pharmacist in the hospital has with the prescriber is very tied. You know, decisions that are made are jointly made um, for the most part and I, I rely heavily on my ID pharmacist for help in, in many difficult situations. New drugs are important for infectious diseases because they help us overcome those resistance mechanisms. The more antibiotics we have in the pipeline that can address these resistance issues that we are seeing, the better we fare in the future for treating these pathogens. Our lab works with a number of scientists that develop the drugs and we are testing them here in this lab. We have many pharmacists that are currently FDA members. So if we don't get new antibiotics, um, I mean, the, the most dramatic way to think about it is entering into a post-antibiotic era. So thinking about what it was like before we had things like penicillin available. There are whole new classes of drugs that are currently being developed, and there are new technologies that better help us understand the, the bugs, the infections that we're treating. I think what's exciting is that society has realized that antibiotics are a unique tool and a special tool. I'm encouraged that Congress is starting to look at new legislation that will facilitate 
uh, the development of new antibiotics. Just looking at the energy and enthusiasm and passion that SIDP members have for their jobs is really reassuring to me that there, there is hope and we are not going to let the bugs win.